Hello, Antioch. Firstly, I want to say thank you for your continued support and for your prayers for my family. I'm very glad to report that by the grace of God, my family remains unaffected by the coronavirus pandemic. Our eldest daughter, Amelia, has started her last year of Yotian, which is uh, preschool, and will start primary school next year in April. This last week, our youngest daughter, Edina, started her first year of preschool, and Mizuho and I are very proud and could not be happier with our two little girls. You know, seeing our children go to school, grow, speak their minds and express themselves, sometimes a little more spiritually than, than others, uh, serves as a reminder just how fleeting time really is. By my own perception of time, it was only a few weeks ago when I first moved to Tokyo, and only just yesterday when my eldest daughter was born and brought to me in my arms for the very first time. Life this year has been quite strange, to say the least. At least, the worst of the virus seems to have blown right past us. We in Japan have been fortunate enough to have lived in a place where the virus just does not seem to be as impactful in terms of deaths and infections as it could have been compared to similar countries and demographics. Life itself is just a test for a greater existence that is beyond our understanding. And as followers of Christ, we strive every day and fall short of embodying the example of Christ with our own lives. Even the most devout can have their faith tested by the events in their lives. This year being a testament to that on a scale many of us have not seen in our lifetimes. Yes, COVID-19 has slowed down the world unlike anything else in recent history. The traffic of the masses, cars, buses, planes, ships, you name it, everything has been so great that the seismographs around the world noticed a measurable drop in the high frequencies produced by humanity on Earth by up to 50%. In that time, we have found ourselves locked in our homes some a little more willingly than others, and cut off from society. We've been directed to refrain from large gatherings of people, to cover our faces with masks. Some embrace these mandates better than others. I've seen many beautiful examples of the kindness that we are capable of put on display. The optimism that we hold in the face of adversity is truly a beautiful sight that we can behold. On the other side of that coin, however, I've also seen pessimism, avarice, and even hatred. In the face of these stay-at-home orders or mandates, a lot of Christians began to say that if they could not gather in their physical church buildings in mass, that they were somehow being oppressed or somehow done away with by the powers that be or the governments that are in place. Many more still defiantly pushed back against the mandate or even the law in order to express their faith as they saw fit. Others would even go as far to say that if you are not an active resistor to the oppression, then you are probably a lesser Christian for it. Now, I'm not going to speak for these people as to whether or not they are Christians or whether they're believers, because I think that your faith is between you and God. However, I saw that a great many of these people were feeling as if their lives without weekly physical migrations to a building had somehow become lacking, and that Christ and the Holy Spirit are somehow only able to visit themselves upon us in sanctioned areas at sanctioned times. There existed this very clear showing that Christianity has depersonalized the person of Christ, made him more into an idea than a person that we can relate to. This same disembodiment of Christ created a religion that thusly disassociated itself with the qualities of love, mercy, justice, and peace that Christ wishes for us to represent and that he frequently displayed with his words and actions during his time here on earth. I wanna take my brief time with you today to share what God has shown me over the last year in relation to us as a greater representation of Christ with how we relay the values of Jesus and his teachings to the world in a time when things just don't seem to be going our way. I believe that I am not alone here when I say that I experience frustration when I feel a situation, whether it's small or situation that is larger, whether it's a life situation, uh, not go the way I planned for it to go. And this frustration often builds out with the more we feel that we have a lack of control over things. And this year has been that on many sides. Whether it's joblessness, infection, being locked down, or losing a loved one, many people did not experience a year that they would consider to be one that had gone according to plan. We can have many plans, aspirations, and hopes for our lives that can give us a sense of optimism. 
It is always easy to endure the little things in life or difficult things in life when you're looking at your goals and thinking that these are just bumps down the road. However, this last year has proven to be a year that has sadly driven many people to breaking points. Here in Japan, the number of suicides in 2020 outnumbered the deaths to COVID-19. And while I cannot say with scientific accuracy that the COVID-19 pandemic was a part of this, it can be surmised that the travel cutoffs worldwide, the loss of work and the loss of purpose had created a sense of listlessness in the lives of these people. So that makes us ask, what do we do when life isn't going our way? And today's examples that I'm gonna look at are some examples of the negative way we react. The first one is, is that we panic. In Matthew chapter eight, verses 23 to 25, it says, "'Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. "'Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake "'so that the waves swept over the boat, "'but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. An all too common response to a twist of fate is that we panic. Uh, this last year being a great example of that. Some examples hum humorous and some not so humorous. But one of the more lighthearted ones was when COVID-19 started breaking out across the countries around the world that apparently somebody decided they needed to buy all of the toilet paper in a store. And when I read those articles, I think it was coming out of Australia. I thought it was ridiculous. Until one day I went to the grocery store and I noticed, alas, the toilet paper aisle was completely empty. And I've never realized in that moment if there was ever a time when I truly had no toilet paper left in my house. But these panic buying waves, these, these, uh, these surges to the grocery stores and to the markets only exacerbates a greater problem. Uh, when things run out, stores are unable to meet the demand and it just, creates this sort of feedback loop where things are just being panic bought as soon as they're seen, often making the whole situation worse. And you're going to notice a pattern here that all of these responses that we're going to look at tend to not make the situation better. In other words, the way we react to things is not going to fix the problem rather than what, what comes after that. The second reaction we have is we fight. Uh, and this we can see in Luke chapter 9 verses 51 to 56. It says here, as the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem, and he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven and destroy them? Sometimes, hand in hand with panic, we can respond in anger to things going poorly. Like panic, our anger only serves to make matters worse. Sometime last year, I was riding my bicycle through downtown Tokyo, and over the years of having this bike, it, also it being a used bicycle, the rain had worn down on the lock on the back. And it was this little, it's this little U-shaped lock that goes over the back wheel, and it is part of the frame of the bicycle. And it's pretty typical for Tokyo. Now, they're not exactly high quality locks, so one day as I'm putting the key in, I noticed that it was getting sticky and I tried turning it and I knew I had the right key, but it wasn't turning. And in my frustration, I kept jiggling the key back and forth and eventually I applied some shearing movement to it and broke the key. Yeah. And I realized in that moment, of course, this is my fault. It's not anybody else's fault but my own for being so uh, angry in that moment, like a like a crazed ape just running around a bicycle in downtown Tokyo. And it took me quite a while to hack away at the lock to break it open. And, you know, let me tell you this, that when you're hacking at a lock in downtown Tokyo, um, people ask questions and they want to know if that bike is really yours. Now, fortunately, I've since had that fixed. But if I had just stayed calm and not sheared the lock, then I would never have had that problem in the first place. And this brings us to another reaction that we can have, which is despair. And in Daniel chapter 10, verses 1 to 3, you can see here it says, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belshazzar. Its message was true, and it concerned a great war. The understanding of this message came to him in a vision. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no food, no meat or wine touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. Worse yet, I see this happen very much as well. 
to spare. In Japan, I saw a mix of all three responses personally. The most tragic of all, though, has been this. Like I said earlier in 2020, uh, suicides outnumbered the COVID deaths in Japan. That number was 21,000. 21,000 men, women, and yes, children took their own lives because they felt that they truly had nowhere else to go. Now, each person's individual reason may vary, but these were all people that had deep pits of sadness in their lives. You know, we as a people are capable of doing some very dark things, whether it's taking our own lives or the lives of others. These emotions and reactions, although different, often are hand in hand with each other. We can be driven to do dark and evil things when we feel that there's no way out. However, in all of these examples, God came through with support. It's important to remember that we were never promised a bump-free life, and our reactions to these bumps are the crucible in which we are formed in Christ's image. It's important to remember that we have to strive to emulate Christ no matter what's going on. And this year has been definitely a year to test our mettle. So many of us haven't been in a proper church service in quite some time. Many more still have further disassociated themselves from the image of Christ, as their accountability may have been tied more to a community rather than a personal relationship with Christ alone. So what does God say to these reactions that we have? If we look in Matthew chapter 8, verse 26, he says here, uh, he replied, You have little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. Jesus just stood up and, and made the problem go away with his actions. And in uh, Luke chapter 9, 55 and 56, when the disciples were saying, let's rain fire down on this village, it says here in verse 55, but Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then he and his disciples went to another village. You know, sometimes these problems that come up in our life are problems that we cannot personally solve. Maybe it's a, a relationship with a, with a person, or maybe it's a... a a company or a group of people, sometimes moving out of that situation is the best way to deal with it. And we don't need to be vengeful. We don't need to curse them as we walk on the way out and throw rocks at them or, or blast them on social media. We don't need to do those things. Sometimes just walking away is the best way to deal with it. And in Daniel chapter 10, verse 12, uh, God comes back to Daniel and says, Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come to you in response to them. Not only do we need to remember that uh, God is going to come and he has these situations all figured out. Nothing's taking God by surprise, right? We also have to remember that we need to strive to understand what God's plan is and to be humble before God. This last year, when things didn't go according to some people's own personal plans, they got angry. They said that this was just all a, a ruse and that you know God's plan was going to win. But they act like they know what God's plan is. And the truth of the matter is, we don't know. We have inklings, we have vague understandings of, of general directions that things are going in, but we don't know the step-by-step -step plan. We don't know what tomorrow is going to be. And anybody that tells you differently is probably trying to sell you something. And I know I can read all of this to you, and I can tell you to not do these things, to not be afraid, and to never get angry. And yeah, well, it's easier said than done, right? But this COVID-19 virus is, of course, a major event in our lifetimes. But I can tell you it's not going to be the last. We must remain vigilant, focused, and strive to represent Jesus in all these situations. As for myself and for my family, we'll continue to serve God as best we can. I really am looking forward to the end of this, to the virus going away and at least being brought under control and to being able to travel freely around the world again and to seeing you people over in Singapore. I, I miss my family. I miss my uh, country that, uh, for lack of a better term, I have called home for a very long time. I miss Singapore, I miss the people there, and I miss my family there. And I look forward to seeing you all again real soon. And I want to thank you again for your prayers and for your love and for your support for us here in Japan. From my own family, from Amelia, from Edina, and from Mizuho, uh, we thank you. I love you all.
And I pray for you all. And I thank you for your continued prayers and support.